often think that ang being angry is sin. You know, um, the fact that you get angry, I believe, is almost like a way for you to investigate what are you agreeing with? What have you expected out of someone that has not been met? You know, and anger can be used to be positive, to look to, you know, to deal with something that you maybe not be aware that you're doing and believing and agreeing with that is not the word. Okay, so anger kind of is, a to me, it's almost like a barometer that something that you are believing is not truth, not God's word. OK, and it's causing you to have some, you know, um, some emotions that are are some negative emotions that is, is prompting anger. Uh, we shared Sunday that anger is not a primary. It's not what you primary go to. It is a secondary emotion that you go to because it is uh, letting you know something has been triggered in you that is causing you some negative feelings. All right. So a lot of times people you know, say, oh, you know, uh, well, I, if I'm, ang I'm angry, then I'm in sin. But anger does not necessarily, being angry does not necessarily mean that you're in sin. You, you know, anger can definitely take you to sin. And any lasting or prolonged anger will definitely, you know, have you operating in sometimes rage, aggression, um, seething, wrath, all things that are sinful for us, okay? So, I want you to understand that we are, you know, on the on the internet, and and uh, and I see this a lot of people, you know, who contact us. They're doing a lot of working on themselves by looking at uh, different things on the internet, and they're saying, "Well, I need to, I need to stop doing this. I need to do this. I need to agree with this, and and come out of agreeing with that." And and, and I want to say those things are good with God's help. That without God, they're they're not there. Anything you do that does not include and is not because God is 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 prompting you to go there is not good. So uh, just because it's you know you think well I'm angry and now I'm gonna go and I'm gonna do all the things to get deal with anger, but you want to deal with things apart from the Lord, apart from your relationship with Him is not going to work. Everything we do has to do with relationship with him. You know, I was looking at something and I thought, I think the, this is a couple of pitfalls that we fall into from religious teaching, which is, er which is error. And one of them is, is, is saying for us to be moral, you know, tells you to look at Jesus as your example and look like him. So be moral. Doesn't necessarily mean have any kind of relationship with God but just be moral like Jesus. Well, people that don't even know Jesus, I mean, there are people that are unsaved that, that do moral things and they choose to be moral, okay? And another thing religion teaches is uh, like a doctrine of be quiet, you know, um, let go and let God, you know, um, don't get involved because if you get involved, you might be getting involved where God doesn't want you to get involved. So it almost kind of makes you passive. And passivity is, to me, sin. It is the doorway to the enemy. So that's not what we should be doing. We shouldn't be trying to be moral, and we shouldn't be trying to be quiet and, and, and passive. But what we should do is be sure we have a relationship by cultivating it with the Lord. Our fellowship with him is so important. So there can be things going on with you that you might not think you should be doing or you, you might not think that God needs to work on. But if he's not saying to you that he's working on that, you know, then have the type of relationship with him that you are satisfied that he is doing the work that he said he would begin, begin in you. And uh, it's really interesting because um, when it says in the scripture about God knows us, uh, by searching our hearts. This is a term that gave the sense that God goes deeply to unearth a precious gem in us. So in us, in our spirit, we are, we are perfect. We are one with God. There's nothing 
that we need to do nothing that but it's in the soul area you know the mind the will and the emotions that we are you know saying lord i need you to come and 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 clean me clean my heart you know because i've allowed things in from not from agreeing with the world and not agreeing with your word so this is why we have to deal with things because we weren't taught you know as children weren't we now we have to do the renewing and some of us are not renewing our minds to the word of god I mean searching the scriptures getting to know who god is god is his word and the word was god okay so you can't say well i just read my bible but i have no relationship with god or i read my bible but i don't hear god i mean that's that's contradicting because if you are in the word and you are and you're seeking your 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 fellowship you know fellowship with the lord fellowship with even even other believers is going to require you to to know them i think a lot of times what happens is that we have this this idea that people are perfect and and then of course we're definitely perfect <laughs> so you know they're perfect we're perfect so whenever there's any conflict it's like, you know, well, what's wrong with them? You know, because I'm perfect. You know, I, I'm just like Jesus. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but what, what, what you have to see is that sometimes conflict is there to show us what's going on in our hearts or in the heart of our brother and sister. You know, something is there that's going on that is not uh, a, a thing that looks like the Lord. And our responsibility is to, 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 to look into his face, into the word, and to see him in us, and to see us in him. You know, not, not, not this separatism thing where God's up in heaven somewhere, and we got to go up, you know, get holy enough to get up there to approach him. And then, we, then if we just lived without any sin and made sure we repented of every sin that we did, you know, then we can come in and we can, you know, we can have that, that, that fellowship now. No, that's not, that's not it. I mean, that's, that's been taught, but it's, it's error. It's, you know, it's, if we can understand how much God wants that time together with us, that we don't, it isn't about us or how we're living or not living or whatever. Those things will be a, pro, a byproduct when you have that fellowship with him, you'll see yourself different than what the, the way you saw yourself. And you will begin to, to blossom into looking just like your father because of the time spent with him. Not that you're working on, stop doing this, don't do that, don't do this. So I don't want to sound when I'm sharing things with you is that this is the key. Step one, two, three, four, five, you know, and make sure you do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that. Because it, 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 he said it's not by taste not, touch not, handle not. He said that. So it's, it's deeper than that. It's about relationship. So I thought that, you know, if tonight we kind of would see, see it like this, instead of from that place of, I need to be moral, I need to stop doing this, I need to stop doing that. Because what it does is it, it just starts you to working on you and the world does that. I mean, what makes that different from the world? No, we don't want to just work on ourselves. We want to allow God to, you know, his presence to be where we dwell in, where we, you know, we talk to him. I mean, even in the Psalms, when the Psalmist talked, he talked. Now he did talk to himself, but then if you keep reading, he started talking to God. And that's what it's about. It's about getting to the place where you're talking to your father and that, and you're listening to him because he's talking back. So this is what, this is where we, we need to, to have our desire at and not so much, you know, doing all this. Cause I know some people they're searching the, um, the internet day and night, you know, trying to find things, trying to find out, well, why does my husband like this? Or oh, why does my wife do this? Why does she do this? Why do my children do this? Why am I doing this? How can I fix me? And, and, and I've been working on me and, and, and guess what? I think I'm better. And then you, then you do something that you think, well, that wasn't good. Oh, I'm back to square one. I'm not doing it. And it is, it is, it is almost fruitless because it doesn't, does not perpetuate you having fellowship with your father that loves you and cares for you 
and the and just that fellowship will change you you know that's it it's the changing from the inside out not the outside in and that's what we've been doing and it puts us on this in this rat race on this on this uh this gerbil you know just running around, you know going nowhere in a circle you know on a, on a on or running on a treadmill you're you're not you're not going anywhere you're making movement but you're not going anywhere so so this is why when i share these things with you that you take it from the place of this is what i want my father for i'm looking into him the mirror is him i'm looking into his face and he's looking into my face and i said i said i said this you know a long time ago and i'll, I'll repeat it again at a bible study years ago that it's isn't it funny we don't see our face all we see is a reflection and i believe that's because our face is not meant for us to see but it's meant for our father to embrace our face and then for us to look at his face it's an intimate intimate relationship and then this relationship between him and us then goes to our brother and sister so don't give me this I, oh I, it's just about me and god and i ain't got time for y'all well you have missed it because it is about not only the father but it's about us as brothers and sisters he said to love god and keep his commandments and love your what your brother and sister as you love yourself so you can't keep you out of it either so if you're sitting there saying i love god and you don't love you you ain't loving god if you're saying you love god but you're not loving your brothers and sisters you're still not keeping the commandments you're still not loving god because he said in first james how can you say that you love god and we not seen and hate your brother or sister who you do see isn't it interesting that he says that you've not seen now oh, there it is that looking in his face and you look at you know he's looking in your face you're looking in his face but it's not with the these these not natural eyes but they but it's looking spiritually spirit to spirit amen so um i got some chats here I, boy i got quite a few chats here praise god you guys are you guys are talking tonight <laughs> all right um uh, stacy says i agree i find passivity very annoying evil prevails when good people do nothing that's that's it unsure if that's scriptural but i can see truth in it from my own experience you're right it does prevail when people do nothing uh tasha said for it is by grace you have been saved through faith and is not from yourselves it is a gift of god for we are god's handiwork created in christ jesus to do good works which god prepared in advance for us to do ephesians 2 8 thanks Tasha. that's good and 10 and that's the niv okay uh, and, then she, and then she said, uh, she skipped over the most important verse, LOL, not by works <laughs> so that no one can boast, Ephesians 2, 9. Good, good. Also, um, Stacey says, also I agree looking to Jesus as the example but in the context of seeing where we're lacking in our faults, knowing that we ourselves can't change our faults, but we want it to change and we're willing to, for it to change. If we could, could, we would, but it's the power of God that changes us. I believe it to be the part of the grace God gives us. Praise God. That's good. Good. Good job, you guys. So yes, um, understanding it is not by our works. So this will this will help you cut down on your YouTube internet time. <laughs> I, I mean, and have some time with your father and look into his face. And let him look into your face and tell him how much you love him and how much you need him and how that he is important to you and you know you're important to him and it is in that place that we are that we are working from the inside out okay instead of trying to clean up the outside and that was what the pharisees were doing and jesus you know he reprimanded them for that you know, you're trying to clean up the outside of, of the cup and saucer, but it's the inside, you know. So we have to kind of see what we're doing now. So I want you to know that um, there's a purpose for emotions. And even um, the fact that, um, that emotions are there to help you to see 
there are things there that's that's going on that's that you're delighted in and there's things that are going on that you're not so happy with okay but emotions are not to be thrown out the window okay and then don't think of emotions as evil as much as to see what they're trying to show you that's in your heart so when you look at a person you want to see what their heart's like watch what they act like the fruit that's what he said you can you can judge by the fruit if the fruit's there then you know you can get if it's an apple tree and you see an apple you know you can pull an apple off of it you know and the scripture talks about this over and over to us and so we got to see he's using these natural you know examples so that we can understand spiritual things okay so if you feel that you are stuck you looked in the mirror and you looked at yourself and you see this bad temper and you see you are getting angry a lot and you're not dealing with the anger properly because you don't know how you you the way that you saw anger dealt with in the example that was even in your home or you know in in school or wherever you learned to deal with anger at has not been uh, given to you properly so you when you get anger angry you began to operate in rage you know uh you began to operate in wrath and or you began to operate um depending on what it is uh to where you are are seething with this 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 thing that's in you that's burning you up to where you you you're seeing red well i believe that anger is a way for us to see some expectation something we've agreed with that's not the word that now because it is not something that like i said when you understand you got issues other people have issues and then it can also show that there's a misunderstanding you know so i want to talk about that a little bit tonight and uh, help you understand that um there's a purpose you know for our emotions and um I i'm telling you god didn't say throw your emotions out the window. I mean, Jesus operated in compassion. Jesus became angry. You know, he 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 he. Uh, you know, he had that a, a righteous, I call it righteous indignation. He he turned over the money changers in the temple, and and he and he loudly, you know, demanded they leave, and because they were making God's house a a den of thieves. You know, so then therefore, anger can't be bad but anger can say there's something there that needs to be dealt with okay all right in philippians 2 and 3 it says do do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit rather in humility value others okay what i believe happens is that we um get off and and it, and it talks about this. I, I I mean, this is the word in Romans one twenty five. It says they exchange the truth. This is what unbelievers do. They exchange the truth about God for a lie and worship and serve created things rather than the Creator. I believe that well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back to that, but I'm gonna say this. I know that we were created to worship. The Word of God says that we we are created to worship people say they are worshiping they're lying they're worshiping they're worshiping something it may not be god but they're worshiping because you know the word worship means to give worth to something okay to honor something or to evolve your life around something okay and this describes an inner disposition of who a non-believer that does what give their life to something other than God. But a worshiper of God, a believer, gives his what? His life and everything that he has to his father. All right? So that's the difference. They're worshiping. Unbelievers are worshiping just as believers are worshiping. They're just worshiping the wrong thing. All right? Now, when you worship, okay, or or evolve your life around being in control okay it's more likely that you're going to get agitated when what when things feel out of control and then when that happens what's going to be the product 
anger. You got it's gonna take you to anger, okay? Unless you deal with that wrong negative way of thinking. Because what you should find your identity in is being confident in who you are in Christ. And that means that you will hold your plans loosely, meaning your hands are open for him to change them if 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 he desires to. You have no desire to control the situation because you know that you he knows what's best for you. You don't know what's best for you. Okay, here's another one. If you worship and evolve your life around being liked, okay? And then you're going to likely, more than likely, I'm telling you, you're going to fear having anyone that, that uh, you're going to fear confronting anyone because you believe that they might what? Not like you. So you're going to avoid confrontation because you want to be liked. All right? That's not the right way that you should think. That should, you shouldn't agree with that type of thinking. Why? Because you find your identity where? In the word and what? In the confidence of who, you're, who you are. And so you are open to having honest, okay? You're open to having um, helpful conversation with people that you might, may not agree with and they may not agree with you. So if that be the case, then therefore you can deal with situations and confront anything because you're not trying to be liked by man, right? Okay, here's another one. If you worship and revolve your life around comfort, all right, you will try to avoid anything that's painful, right? So you'll find yourself numbing yourself to any any hardship in life, you you won't want to go through it. That's not the way you, and you should agree with, with that type of, 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 of thinking. Because what does it do? It will keep you from knowing who you are and your identity in Christ that he said, you're going to have hardship. You're going to, you're going to have persecution. You're going to suffer, you know. And he said, he even told you how to deal with it. He said, count it all joy. Even when you get into temptation, he told you how to deal with it. So you do, you're going to understand that though you may have pain, you may suffer, you may have things that you have to experience that are uncomfortable, that God is there with you and he's giving you his Holy Spirit, the comforter. So see the difference in thinking the a way that's not right and then thinking of the way that the word says, and how when you think things that are not right, how it can cause you to become angry, it can cause you to become passive, it can cause you to become inactive, all right? That's what you want to avoid. You want to line yourself up and agree with the word. We worship God. We are created to worship his word, meaning that that's who we are. That's what we do. That's what we evolve our life around is our father. Okay. So it says in Luke 6, 43 through 45, that no good tree bears bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. Each tree is recognized by its own fruit, right? People don't pick figs from thorn bushes, nor grapes from buyers. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. Okay? So, some way you have agreed with something that is a negative expectation, that or an expectation that's unmet, or you've agreed with something that's not the word, and then when you don't have those things, out of your mouth comes what? Comes anger. Out of your mouth comes anger. Or if you're from the religious, holy, oh, I just don't show my anger. So you just stuff it down. You're still angry, but now you, you're, you're just stuffing it down. Or you have an emotion that is negative 
and then you don't show it because you know you don't want to show a negative emotion because you're you know you're so you're a good christian you know you don't show those things all right so then what do you do you stuff that down you stuff that down and now what you're doing is doing no more than causing yourself to have even worse things that's going on because you're not dealing with the your emotions properly you're not dealing with the anger properly because there's ways that you have to deal with anger because like we share with you Sunday, so go back and look at Sunday's message uh, that anger is 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 to be it I mean, releases the same chemical that stress does. So you have all this this chem this energy chemical coming up for you to fight or run, fight or flight, and if you don't do anything with it, that that can backfire on your body. That's why they, people tell you don't stay in stress a lot. Well, don't stay in anger a lot because it's the same chemical releases. I'm not, I'm not here to try to medically, you know, make this thing clear to you. I'm here to try to say spiritually, you have to deal with anger. You can't suppress it. You can't blow up and, 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 and scream at people and lose your head. You know, I'm telling you, I know, I'm telling you this because I know that's what I did. I didn't know how, to, I wasn't taught how to deal with anger. I wasn't taught that my emotions were my responsibility. I thought other people made me feel the way I did. And I lived, I mean, like that for years. I think, well, they made me, they made me angry. They made me sad. They made me, you know, feel lonely. They made me feel fear. No. No one can, no one has authority over you, but you. So if you're going through some negative emotions, you got to see why. That anger is like an investigator, I call it, to investigate. What have I agreed with? What if I, what if I now said that this is it instead of the word of God? Because that's what it's showing me. There's something here that's not, that's not godly that I've agreed with. Now, then take time out to go before the Lord. This is why I'm saying you can't use all these things that you hear. You got to go to God. Lord, show me what have I agreed with? What have I uh, accepted as my as, as right? Like, if, if I, have I accepted that I should like everybody and everybody should like me? Well, that's not the word. Have I accepted that I, I want to please everybody? Well, that's not the word. So find out through the hope of help, I'm sorry, of the Holy Spirit, what it is that you've agreed with and then come out of agreement, renounce it, denounce it, and then agree with the word, okay? This is one of the things that you have to understand about anger. You got to find out why, why are you angry? What is it coming from? Okay. All right, come on, I got a hand raised. Great. Okay, let me see. Oh, I got, okay, I'm gonna unmute you guys. You go right ahead, precious, and unmute yourself. Can you, can you get your, can you speak? Did you intend to have your hand up? <laughs> Hello. Okay. All right, you can unmute yourself, Precious. All right, maybe maybe she hit cuz hit it in error. Okay, all right. Okay, so um, let's let's go on. Let's go on. So um, understand that when when we talk about this scripture about out of the you know from a good tree comes good fruit and from a bad tree it can't produce good fruit it can only produce bad bad fruit. You can understand that um, that you and and understand this. I'm I'm gonna make this. Let me try to get this here. So understand that what you're doing is agreeing with the word that if there's some thing that's that is in you okay um 
I mean, you can only give what's in you. You can't give something that's not in you. That's why it says you can't go and get uh, figs from thorns. Can you, you know, from a thorn bush, you can't, you can't get a fig from there because that's not what it produces. And the same thing, you can't get a, um, you can't pick a fig. Uh, I'm sorry, pick, uh, pick a grape from a briar because great that grapes don't produce that. Okay. I mean, briars don't produce grapes. Okay. Okay, I think I saw your hand again. Okay, I've unmuted you guys. Again. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm not I'm sorry. I don't know why why you can't can't talk precious. I saw your hand again. Okay. It's not allowing you guys to talk because I have unmuted. It says, uh, it says, okay, there you are. <laughs> okay. Can you oh, hear me? Uh, yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. I could not figure out how to do it, so I don't know what happened. Okay. So I just wanted before you moved on from um, talking about how we're responsible for our own emotions, our own anger, whatever, um, responsible for figuring out where our triggers are coming from and what we've come into agreement with. Right. I just thought it was important to note that in order for people to do that, uh -huh. it's important to start to take time and take an inventory. So it's a hard thing to learn to be quiet oh. before you respond. Mm -hmm. It's a hard thing to learn to allow yourself to just breathe through the moment mm -hmm. and process through. Because a lot of times when we're emotional, we're angry, we're hurt, we immediately respond. We mm -hmm. don't give ourselves a chance to really even process what's going on. So we don't even understand what we're going through. Mm -hmm. And so that's why it's important to kind of start to take, um, if journaling works for you, journal, if just finding some other coping skills works for you, find those, whether it's deep breathing, whether it's counting to 10, do something in that moment to press like the E stop. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times you don't take a moment to, to say, okay, I'm feeling this before you respond. A lot of times you, you feel it and then you respond. Right. And then the next thing you're dealing with is a lot of um, shame, mm -hmm. resentment, oh, yeah. embarrassment. So then the Absolutely. enemy kind of has you coming and going. Right. So it's important right. that you start to learn how to process. And an important part of processing is learning to give yourself time before you respond. That's good. You're, you're preaching my message. I'm going to let you preach this next week. <laughs> <laughs> No, I just, I think that's important because when I was learning how to, to not important. be so explosively anger, angry as I used to, mm -hmm. the hardest part was the first part, like learning to, sh to be quiet, like mm -hmm. um, to not sound harsh or anything. Like the first thing I tell women who I'm talking to, rule number one is shut up, like seriously. Mm -hmm. And that's the first thing that I want you to do is just be quiet. Right. Like right. no matter what you're feeling in this moment, just be quiet and then give yourself a chance to identify what you're actually feeling because a lot of times we're feeling hurt we're mm -hmm. feeling rejected we're feeling abandoned mm -hmm. but we lash yeah. out in anger because that is the quickest way to defend ourselves well actually, if i can hurry up mm -hmm. and be like then you're gonna stop doing what you're doing right you know you're right i'm not and that's why i said anger is normal i mean it's natural it's not unnatural it's just that what, if you get hurt or you get feel sad or you feel abandoned or you feel lonely or you feel betrayed or you feel well it will take you to anger it's just the next step but it's for us that I, I say use that anger as an investigative tool to say why did I get angry what what did I agree with you know 
and you did go into some good things because that was those are the ways I was going to tell you to deal with anger because anger has to be dissipated. You can't just get angry and think, you know, I'm going to just push it down, you know, and not say anything. I'm just going to be quiet. And that's what religion has taught us. It's taught us to not, you know, deal with the anger. And I, I want to, I'm, I'm, I'm so glad. Would you, would, was there anything else you're going to share, Precious? Because that was really good. Thank you. No, ma'am. Was... I just wanted to share that. That's okay. all. Thank you. Thank you. I want to talk about Genesis 4 uh, and the stories in um, Genesis 4 verses 5 through 8, where uh, it talks about Cain and Abel. Okay. And this is the Lord talking to Cain. Okay. And he said, you know, why are you angry? Okay. So that's why I'm telling you, you got to really see why are you angry? And God's asking that to Cain. Okay. I got another hand raised. So I'm just going to Go, get get this hand because I'm so excited you guys are talking. Go right ahead. <laughs> okay. So you were saying that anger has to be dealt with. Yes. And I think I get what you're saying, but just for the sake of clarity, mm-hmm. anger and rage aren't the same thing. Yeah, the Bible says I'm, that oh, human wow, anger. Guys, I'll let you guys preach this. The, the, uh, Sunday, you and Precious. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's it. That's that's my notes. You right there. Go ahead. I'm excited. Human I'm so anger excited. doesn't produce the righteousness of God, but anger mm-hmm. in and of itself, it's like saying that. Well, happy has to be dealt with because it's. I'm. Mean, you need it. You need it all. You need that. That's why we that's have right. them. We have mm-hmm. we have these emotions. So it's not that anger in and of itself, but it's the sin. Like be angry, sin not. Mm-hmm. It's the it's the anger that leads to sin, mm-hmm. and it's the 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 sin that it led you to, that needs to be dealt with. I get angry, but then, you know, I can choose to go one way or the other with that anger. Like yes. you were saying, be creative. You so all yes. kinds of things you can do, and if maybe sometimes if you weren't angry, maybe you wouldn't do what you needed to do or take that step or you know leave that job or whatever the case may be anger in and of itself is not a bad thing so I don't want people listening to think that if you're getting angry you're not like God because that's not true and that and that's what but that's what religion teaches you know and they said you don't be angry then but the bible says be angry but sin not so that's contradictory okay why is it saying because I think that they 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 they're taking it and they're saying you know don't ever get angry but if you have some some wrong thinking, some wrong uh, beliefs, then you're going to get angry because they're going to, they're not going to be met because they're not the word. Okay. So that's good. That's good. Thank you guys for sharing tonight. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Praise God. Um, so in the story of Cain and Abel, God asked Cain, why are you angry? And why has your face fallen? Okay. So, and then he said, if you do well, Will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, what happens? Okay. Sin, it says, is crouching at the door. So that's where the anger could take you to sin. Examine why are you angry and deal with that. And Precious said a great thing because I think that um, you have to understand you choose, thank you, Tasha, you're writing my notes, whether or not you're going to allow that anger to show you know go to god and say lord why am i angry show me what this is or i'm going to take i'm going to act out in rage or i'm going to act out in violence aggression i'm going to you know that's the sin no let the anger do what make you seek god and 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 ask what is this what's going on with me i think this is so important all right so here, when God asked him that, okay, and then what happens? Cain went, spoke to his brother, okay, because usually when we get angry, some people suppress, but other people scream like precious, and I used to get upset and yell and whatever. That was me because I didn't know how to deal with it. And what happened? So he, did, he spoke to his brother about the anger, but then when they were in the field, he killed him. So what he, so he never dealt with what was in him, which was God was saying to him, why are you angry? You've agreed with something that's not the word. And his thing was, why should his sacrifice be accepted? He brought what? He brought God, you know, the, the fruit of the earth. 
But God didn't say that that was going to be the sacrifice you needed. He said you had to bring what? You had to bring blood, a blood sacrifice. So his, he agreed with something that was not the word. When you get angry, see, check out your agreement. I'm telling you, that's where it always comes. You know, what are you agreeing with? That's not the word of God. Then when you understand that this anger that is showing you something, is showing you yourself, you then can go before the Lord and do what the word, see, God asked him, what was your anger? He didn't answer God about what he really was, was in his heart. Cause that anger is showing something is in your heart. Something is there. That's not right. Okay. Now listen at this, the ways that you have to deal with anger and I want to say this kind of because I know my time is, and then I'm going to go back and give you some scriptures. Is that Preston was right, right on? You have to do something to dissipate anger because it releases that fight or flight. That you got these hormones that you got, you know, all this energy. You know, you know, uh, some people can like if the, if breathing helps you. Some people could just, you know, okay, deep, deep breaths and kind of like, you know, let that begin a process to dissipate. You know, some people can count to 10, like, okay, I need to count to 10, calm myself down. Some people, can, some people can't calm themselves down with counting to 10 or breathing. Some people need to get out and run <laughs> or walk. Get, I need to walk this off. You ever heard people say that? So whatever way that you can dissipate the anger, dissipate it because you've released a lot. Your body has released all this energy for you to deal with something, okay? Now, the next thing you need to do is exactly what Precious said. You need to talk about it now. Now that you, you know, well, I'm sorry, you need to um, figure out why you, you you got angry. What happened? You know, by, by sometimes talking about, sometimes your anger could be a misunderstanding. It could just be a total misunderstanding of what happened. And if you don't talk about it, you'll never know that. So talk about it, you know. But you, before you talk about it, you got to get yourself, you know, to where you are not operating in the anger, you know, and what anger has released. Be sure you're not, you know, because you don't, if that's, if that's the case, you're going to be screaming, you're going to be yelling, you're going to see red. You're gonna, no, you got to first dissipate that anger with some type of exercise. Okay. Go, oh, go ahead, Tasha. I think you're already, you can, you can talk. Did you have something else you want to share? You want me to interrupt you, Jan? Okay. Uh, Tasha? Sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear. Go ahead. I thought I had... Yeah, you are you are off. Go ahead. Okay. Um there are some YouTube comments. Oh, good. Thank you. Uh Apostle Dixie, the Lord said I was angry because of unforgiveness. Oh, also, the Father said that intimacy with him will allow me to know my identity in him, okay. which will bring everlasting freedom to me. Amen. Um, Jennifer said, I agree, but my problem is being around people who lie and expect me to believe them. Mm -hmm. I know it's happening, but I can't confront it anymore. It doesn't work. Any thoughts? Okay. Any thoughts? Yes. First of all, why, you, you have an expectation of people that is too high. People will lie. People will steal. People will cheat. People will, and they can be believers. So you have to get that, un, that, uh, that expectation that you have that's not going to be met. You got to stop. You got to understand people have thoughts. And maybe you can take that anger and allow that anger to give you some creative ways to help people get free from some of the stuff that they do that they may not even be aware they're doing. You know, you can use anger create creatively, you know, to help others to see, you know, uh, I was going to say this, that, that Jesus gave that scripture when I was sharing you about, about the, the fig going to, you know, gather fig. You don't go to, to briars, you don't go to thorn bushes. I mean, and then briars are gather grapes. He was saying that, you know, you need to understand that there are things that what's going to produce out of even the earth is what's inside the seed. So what's you're going to produce is what's inside you. So there's, you, you got this thing that you think people shouldn't lie. That that's well, I mean, they shouldn't, but guess what they do. So come out of agreement with that and understand that people need help. They're not perfect. 
and you may be the main thing God uses to touch someone with your forgiveness for them being deceitful and saying, God wants you to come out of that, you know, have a, a, a relationship with him that you pour out to him or you don't feel you need to lie to make people think that you're something you're not or to make, you know, a situation go away that you don't want it to go, you know, give it to God. Sometimes people lie because they don't know God is there and you can, you can give everything to him. You can cast your care on. Sometimes they, they take the care and they go like, I'm going to fix this instead of giving it to God and letting God fix it. So you can be used by the anger that you have if you let it go to the word instead of allowing it to go to sin. Now, if you get mad, you get angry, and you're ready to cuss them out, or you're ready to separate from them because you just like, I don't want to deal with you, you phony, you're a hypocrite, but then that's not God. I mean, you're not going to reach them. Now you just, you know, have created and possibly an enemy or you now broken a relationship. And then, of course, in fellowship with someone. That's not what you want to do, okay? You want to be able to reach people. So everybody knows when they're, they're not right, but they don't. Everybody doesn't know that God loves them in spite of where they are. I hear people say, well, I just don't, I want to do what God said because I don't want to go to hell. I mean, God isn't sending you to hell, <laughs> you know? So that's what you, we've got to tell people. We've got to let them understand that we are there for them and we're praying for them. And you could be there and share with them, you know, look, you know, I know that the enemy is, is tempting you to lie, but you know what? He, he, he knows that he'll tempt you to lie and then he'll accuse you once you lied. And, and then now you're upset. Now you are falling away. You're not, you know, having no, no fellowship with your father because you feel, you know, you disappointed. He mean, it's a game and, and you can expose that to them. Okay. Instead of just saying, well, I just can't stand when somebody lie. Okay. No, don't any, does anybody like when people lie? No, but that's not, that is, goes further than that. Okay. Uh, good job with uh, Tasha or Precious. One of you said forgiving that I think Precious said forgiving. That's a big key. You know, forgive. Uh, Precious said take a time out. That's good. You take a time out. That's when you can go to the Lord and, and say, Lord, I've, I've gotten angry. What's in me? What is this that I've agreed with? It's not you. Holy Spirit, reveal it to me, you know. Um, and then also, uh, once you take a time out, it can also get, be a place where you can be creative. When the Lord shows you things, he can show you creative ways to, to, to mend relationships. You know, when you, when you of course, forgive because you, you need to forgive. Now, let me tell you something. Before you start speaking, though, when you get angry, angry you want to first find out what, what's the primary emotion that you're dealing with. Because if you're dealing with, if you don't understand what you're dealing with, you could start speaking out of that emotion. Okay. So you got angry. You ask them, what is the emotion? And you're not sure what it is. Say the emotion is loneliness. Now you're talking to somebody, but you begin to talk to them from loneliness. And that's not what you want to talk. You want to be able to identify, okay, I'm lonely. God says that I'm never alone. That's not the word. He says he, he's, he, that he will never leave me or forsake me. So you, you come out of agreement with that. And then when you talk to the person that may have caused you to feel like that, you're talking to them now, not from a place of a negative feeling, but you're talking to them to let, the, let them know, you know, and because maybe they might be able to have some solution for you too. You know, God uses his people. So, you know, just, just begin to talk, you know, not from the negativity, but talking to find resolution, okay? Um, another thing is that um, anger can be external or internal, so it can be confusing. It can be very complex because you can be sitting talking to somebody, nothing's happening that you can see that they should be angry about, and all of a sudden they don't tend. You're like, what's wrong with you? You know, because it's internal, some things, because it's coming from something that they have agreed with internally, and, and it has nothing to do with you. It could be something to do with something that happened to them, you know, years ago or whatever. And now they're experiencing that, that negative emotion, and then it's taking them to anger, okay? So understanding that anger could be internal as well as external. And I know, I'm, I'm, I don't want to rush through this, you guys, but I really want to share these things because I want you to understand Anger can come from a misunderstanding. You know, somebody um, was screaming 
and you thought they were screaming at you and you get you go to 10 because you feel sad and they were they were screaming at the lady across the street and it wasn't even you so that's why talking about it brings an understanding in a misunderstanding okay so that's a good reason to, to share about it okay um when you when you when you calm down that's when you talk don't talk when you on 10 you got to do these other things that we talked about you know find how to dissipate it you know find what you you know whether it's your like counting to 10 or if it's breathing exercises if you got to get out and run or you got to walk it off or you got to I, I, I was talking to someone about anger she said well I go out and get in my garden I just start pulling weeds I just start pulling weeds I'm just about to pass out they pull weeds <laughs> you know so do something you know to dissipate that energy okay all right and then therefore when you talk you can, you can talk from a calm place because you've, you've went, you've prayed about it, you've taken a time out, you've gone to the Lord and, you know, and, uh, and he's showing you that, that this thing is from some negative emotion and you can go talk about it and confront the problem, you know, with a solution, not with just tell somebody because you're on 10 and you're screaming and you just gone, you know, you seeing red and, and, and not, you're, you're just, People are gonna run, run from you. Okay, I'm telling you, that's exactly what it, what it does. And when you talk about it with people, you gotta go back to using those I statements. Remember, I told you, you are the authority over you. It's not somebody else. So don't go and say, well, you made me angry. No, no. Let's let's cut that because that does what makes that person defensive, and now you you now you you're just causing more conflict. No, say I felt angry because I was I felt lonely or i felt sad or i felt betrayed i mean you you can say what you feel and we as believers we are concerned to, about our brothers and sisters how they feel don't have this attitude well dude, that's you that's your problem no if it's a, if it's something that you can help them with and give them scriptures then definitely do that now if they don't hear you though then then sometimes you do have to separate so that they can do the work that they need to do because it is about them okay um when you go to talk to a person after you know you 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 about your anger situation because you don't want to suppress it you do want to talk about it but you don't want to use dirty fighting okay you don't want to go and do and do the uh talk to them about it when it's not a good time you know timing is is, is critical when you talk to people i tell couples married couples set up a time to talk to each other people's schedules are so busy you know you you just you know sometimes you just can't dump something right on your spouse at the moment you want to dump sometimes it takes it, you know you need to say look can i talk to you about i got something going on when when's a good time to talk to you and they'll tell you and then that let that be a time because that's a form of dirty fighting when you just come jump on somebody you know when they're you know trying to relax or they're they're looking at their and people love their tv i'm telling you they're looking at tv and you want to come talk to them you may not care about tv but they care about tv so it's being inconsiderate so timing timing is critical and then the other dirty fighting uh things where you come in and you just start throwing everything at the person that that's not what you actually got angry for you know it's not that the dog didn't get walked last week you know it wasn't because the dishes was left two weeks ago no you're angry about this current thing that is going on right now so don't start throwing a whole bunch of stuff at a person because then you, you're defeating the the purpose of trying to, to come to a resolution because this can definitely be, uh, go into rise into conflict okay so um and 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 like i say practice 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 forgiveness forgive people people are flawed you are flawed i'm sorry i know you think you were the best thing that, that ever happened but you're not you got some issues so realize that and give people a break they got issues too and and i think you, you know that this will let that i tell you because a lot of this comes from pride you know you oh I only nothing wrong with me. It's it's her. Come on, be real. You know, um, uh, having an ego, you know, uh, is a big thing. And ha and being selfish and just just being selfish. It's, it's about me. You know, sometimes people could do things that may make you feel uh, sad or lonely, or whatever that and and that has nothing to do with you. You know, so you know, understand that. Okay, and um, so please stop holding grudges forgive and let people go okay let them go all right um tasha <laughs> you're unmuted you can go right ahead
Nope, I just never lowered my hand. Oh, okay. From what okay. I All right. <laughs> Now I see you. You did it to me. Okay. Uh, I got some chats here. It says, on a positive note, our spirit is stronger than our flesh. Our born again spirit, I think it just takes faith and time for it to grow, but it stops us from having our, but, uh, it, let's see, wait a minute. Our spirit is stronger than our flesh. Our born again spirit, I think it just takes faith and time for it to grow, but it stops us from having our buttons pushed and it takes a lot more and more time for it to happen emotions aren't being suppressed but our spirit is in control of them not our flesh okay well that's if we allow the spirit the spirit of god to be controlling i'm i got you so that that there see if there ain't no button there ain't nothing to push that's the thing we got to get the buttons take the buttons out you know i don't have a button that i think everybody's supposed to like me take that button out because that ain't according to the word i don't have a button where i gotta please everybody take that button out because god told me to be a god pleaser not a man pleaser i, I don't have, so get rid of the buttons <laughs> i like that okay uh she says i guess it's important to remember who they are um before who they are before christ and we are still and we still aren't perfect but we will be ll two words for me to take from this unreal expectations either towards others and even towards myself yes can i say that and get an amen get rid of these unreal expectations that you got on you it's like oh i can't make a oh i made a mistake i can't make no mistake because i'm i'm the the, the the vice president of the prophet of the of the evangelist that went out for the apostle no you're gonna make a mistake so get that unrealistic expectation out of your heart you go, you, you're not going to be perfect, okay? There's only one perfect, and that was Jesus. And even when the word talks about perfect, it, it's the word maturity, not without fault. So give yourself a break and give other people more breaks, all right? Wow, thank you. You got me there. <laughs> so um, I, I know my time is up, and um, I, <laughs> but I do want to tell you this, is that anger is not aggression. Anger it's not wrath. <laughs> wrath is 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 different. We're gonna get into that. Uh, hopefully, we'll we'll um, sh uh, share some more of this with you. You know, on the on the next broadcast. But thank you so much for joining us. Uh -huh.